Welcome to the channel. I trust that you're doing well. My name is Kyle and in this video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use the spot exchange on Bybit. So this video is for folks that just simply want to buy and hold cryptocurrency. If you were looking to learn how to trade derivatives on Bybit, I do have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do that. And I'll leave a link for that video in the description down below. In this video, I'll show you how to deposit some crypto, where to go if you need to buy crypto using fiat. From there, I'll get you familiar with the pairings and user interface. Then I'll show you how to buy and sell cryptocurrency using limit orders, market orders, and even how to manage your risk by setting a stop loss. All of that and more with some tips and tricks along the way. If you haven't already signed up for Bybit, I left a link for you in the description of this video, as well as in the pinned comment down below. Feel free to sign up with that link and you can receive up to a $4,000 sign up bonus, at least at the time of recording, perhaps even more when you're watching this video. That bonus does go into the derivatives account, but you can use that money to place trades and the profit is all yours to keep. If you find this tutorial helpful, don't forget to leave a like and hit subscribe. If you haven't already signed up, now's a good time to pause the video, get signed up and I'll see you inside Bybit. First, I'll show you how to buy cryptocurrency using fiat, as well as how to deposit crypto to Bybit. If you're already familiar with this process, feel free to skip ahead a little bit in this tutorial, or use the timestamps in the description down below to skip to a section that's most relevant to you. To buy some cryptocurrency using fiat, just come up here to the top left-hand side of the screen and hover over Buy Crypto. From here, we'll go ahead and just use the Express option. And here's the order form where you can buy crypto using fiat and Bybit does have a variety of options available and they'll be adding more options in the future. Now, depending on where you're located in the world, you might even have more options than I do. Different countries are going to come with different regulations. To view the payment methods that are available to you, just come down here where it says payment methods and give this box a click. In this little pop-up window, Bybit will be displaying the payment options that are available to you. So in my case here, you can see that I have a credit card that's available. Down below that in P2P Match, we can do TransferWise as well as Interact eTransfer. Now, I personally don't use a credit card when I'm buying cryptocurrency, but if that is the payment method that you'll be using, you'll have to attach the credit card to your Bybit account. So to do that, we'd click on Credit Card. Then right down here, we would click on Add Card. Bybit's going to show you a little notification here and it says your card issuer will be charged a small amount as a test deposit. It will be auto refunded within seven days after the verification is complete. The time it takes to receive the refund is dependent on your bank. So in other words, a couple microtransactions are going to take place for the purposes of verifying your card. If you're okay with that, you'd put in your email, read the terms and services here, check this box if you're okay with that and then click on continue. The next step is simply putting in your email as well as your credit card details and then click on validate card and proceed. Once the verification process is complete, your card will be connected to your Bybit account. So now we can head back over here to the express option like so. And now we're back to the order form. Once your card is connected, it's as simple as coming up here, type in the amount you wish to spend. So if we wanted to do $200 down below, Bybit will be showing you what you'll be receiving. In this case here, we're set to Tether, but we can click where it says USDT and we can select a cryptocurrency from this drop down menu here. But I'll just go ahead and leave that on Tether. Then down below, we would choose our payment method. So we'd toggle over to credit card and then we would simply click on buy to make that purchase. Once the transaction goes through, your cryptocurrency will be in your spot wallet. To get to your spot wallet, just simply come up here in the top right hand side of the screen and hover over assets. From this drop down menu, click here where it says spot. And this is going to bring you over to your spot account on Bybit. This is where your cryptocurrency is going to go once you buy it using fiat. If you're simply looking to deposit crypto to Bybit from another exchange or a wallet address, you'll notice here on the right hand side under action, each one of these cryptocurrencies has its own deposit button. You'll also notice a deposit button up at the top here beside withdraw. So option one, you can click on the deposit button of the cryptocurrency you wish to deposit or just simply use the deposit button up here. So I'll go ahead and do that for this demonstration. Then Bybit will give you a little deposit pop-up window here. Quickly give this a read, click on acknowledge. And you'll notice that by default, we're on Bitcoin here. If we wanna change that, we could just click right here where it says Bitcoin and we could choose the cryptocurrency from this drop-down menu that we wish to deposit. 
Down below that, you'll see your QR code. So if you're sending in from a smartphone, you can scan your QR code. And down below that, you'll find your deposit address. So you can either copy that address or just use this little box here to copy it. Notice down here that in my case, it says deposits auto channeled to derivatives. So if you're only looking to use the spot market on Bybit, you're going to want to click here where it says derivatives and then select spot. Now, when you make a deposit, the funds are going to go straight into your spot account. If you make a boo-boo and your coins go into your derivatives account, don't worry, I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel how to transfer them from your derivatives account back into your spot account. So definitely check out that video. It's a very easy process. It's all done internally and there's no fees to do it. Now that we have this channel to spot, all the deposits are going to arrive in the spot account. Double check, make sure your chain type is correct. Like for example, if we come over here to Tether, You'll notice there's multiple chain types. So you're going to want to make sure that your chain type matches. You don't want to send the coins to the wrong chain type or you don't want to be sending Ethereum to Bitcoin addresses or you know, vice versa, Bitcoin addresses to Ethereum addresses. I'm sure the type of person watching this video is well aware of that. But for anybody that's going through this process for the first time, just understand that if you don't send it to the right chain type, uh, you're probably going to lose your coins forever and there's nothing you can do to get them back. So it's important to not have any mistakes when transferring coins. And depositing is as simple as that. Now that we have some crypto on the exchange, we're ready to trade using the spot market. To get to the spot market, just come up to the navigation bar at the top of the screen and hover over trade. And right here is where you're going to find the spot markets. You'll notice that Bybit has four different markets. They have the Tether pairings, Bitcoin pairings, USDC, as well as DAI pairings. And just down below in this drop down menu is where you can view all the different pairings that are available. You'll notice beside Bitcoin as well as ETH, it says 3x. That just means up to 3x and you have to enable that within the user interface before it comes into effect. So we can go ahead and just ignore that for now. For this tutorial, I'll select BTC USDT. And here's the user interface where all the trading on the spot market takes place. Once again, on the left hand side here, we can see all the different pairings and different market types. So currently we're set to the Tether pairings. This means that all of these pairings are quoted in Tether. We're going to need Tether to purchase any altcoins using these pairings, or if we sell an altcoin using these pairings, we'll be receiving Tether for the sale. If we were to select the Bitcoin market pairings, this means that all these pairings are quoted in Bitcoin. So in order to buy an altcoin, we'll need Bitcoin to make the purchase. And if we sell an altcoin using these pairings, we'll be receiving Bitcoin for the sale. By far the most popular pairing on Bybit is USDT, at least at the time of recording. So we'll go ahead and just stick with that for this tutorial. Next to the market pairings, we have the price action chart. And the price action chart is showing us the assets performance over a selected time frame. You can see in my case here that I currently have this set to a daily time frame, which means that each one of these candlesticks represents a day's worth of price action. The chart will allow us to observe the historical price action of the asset. With this information, we can look to identify patterns and trends inside the price action in order to develop a bias as to where we think price might go next. We can also use the historical price action to identify areas where we may be interested in buying or selling the asset. This technique is what's known as technical analysis. This will allow us to be a bit more strategic when placing our buys and sells to maximize the value of our positions as well as manage our risk. This is all part of a well-rounded trading and investing plan. Currently, this chart is set to standard. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to toggle over to the trading view chart. Now this chart is powered by trading view and it's going to give you plenty of more options. You can add drawing tools to this chart now as well as basic indicators. Personally, when it comes to technical analysis, I just simply use TradingView. So I'll go ahead and just drag it into frame like so. And TradingView is the gold standard of technical analysis. At the time of recording, most exchanges are powered by TradingView itself. But by using TradingView directly, you can actually access the data from multiple exchanges for cross-referencing. You can access more indicators, drawing tools. There's just simply a heck of a lot more you can do with TradingView. TradingView is free to try, so I'm going to leave a link for this in the description of the video, as well as in the pinned comment down below. In the future, I'll likely be putting out tutorials on TradingView as well. Perhaps by the time you're watching this video, I've already built a playlist on my YouTube channel. So certainly hit subscribe and check it out. Try out TradingView for free and then you can decide if this is a good fit for you. Link will be in the pinned comment down below as well as the description of this video.
If you want to change the time frame of the chart, you can do so by coming up here to the top left hand side of it and click on the time frame that you wish to view. So if you want a four hour, you click on 4H. If you want a one hour, you can give that a click. Very easy to toggle between time frames. If you're looking for your drawing tools, you'll find them down here at the bottom left hand side of your chart is a tiny little arrow. If you give that a click, it expands and here's where you'll find your drawing tools. Now beside each one of these icons is a tiny little arrow. If you give that a click, it expands into a drop down menu where you'll find a ton of more drawing tools such as horizontals, all kinds of stuff going on in there. So definitely take some time, play around with that and add whatever, uh, whatever drawing tools that you like to use. If you're looking to add an indicator, you just simply click right here on the indicators tab. And because this is powered by TradingView, now you have access to a whole bunch of basic indicators here. So if you were searching for one specifically, like the RSI, you could just type that in like so. And now we can add the relative strength index to the bottom of the chart. If I close that out, you'll see the RSI down below here. I want to get rid of it. I just simply click on this X like so. Next to the chart, we have the order book. The order book is showing us where market participants are interested in buying and selling. These market participants are called market makers, and this is because they are providing liquidity to the order book by using limit orders. When a trader executes a limit order, it becomes visible on the order book for all to see. On the top side of the order book, we have all the asks. And these are the prices that the market makers are willing to sell, at least at the time of recording. Down below, we have all the bids. And these are the prices market makers are willing to pay, at least for the time being. In the price column of the order book, we can see the price point that market makers have placed their order at. In the middle column of the order book, we can see the BTC quantity of the orders. On the right column, we can see the total BTC placed at that price point. When someone comes along and executes a market order, they'll be matched up with the best available price from the order book, and then that successful trade will be viewable in the recent trades panel. Here's where we can see successful trades executed in real time. In the price column, we can see the price point the trade was executed at, and in the quantity column, we can see the size of the successful trade. Currently, we see mostly buys coming in here, a little bit of sells, at least at the time of recording, and when the market gets really volatile, this panel becomes very, very active. And next to recent trades, we have the order panel. You'll see a little pop-up likely saying you may enable margin trading to trade the selected pair, which is up to 3x. But when it comes to margin trading, derivatives are probably a better bet as they give you a lot more uh, flexibility. And this tutorial is just about how to trade on spot. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on do not prompt again. OK. And now we can see the order panel. Inside the order panel, we can be a buyer or a seller using limit orders, market orders, and conditional orders. So let's go over a limit order first. Limit orders will allow us to be more strategic by choosing a price that we wish to buy or sell an asset. First things first, you want to choose if you're going to be a buyer or a seller of the asset. And then the second thing you want to do is select a price point that you're interested in buying or selling at. So I'll go ahead and cover the buy side first. So let's come over here to the chart. I'm going to go ahead and grab a horizontal here from the drawing tools. And I'll go ahead and just stick it on the chart. Something, something like this. Good enough for this example. Now let's imagine that we're looking at this chart thinking to ourselves, you know, Bitcoin's been dumping for a long time, but it looks like it's trying to find some support down at this level. So maybe it's going to come down there, test it one more time, and then perhaps Bitcoin's going to have a rally. So maybe we want to be a buyer if price action is able to get down to that price point. We can see on the Y axis of the chart that there's a price point correlated to that horizontal coming in at 18,918. So we'd come up over here to the order panel and we'd type that into order price. 18,918. The next thing we want to do is choose the quantity of Bitcoin that we'll be purchasing at that level. We'll be able to see our available balance right here. You can see in my case, it's a whopping 26 USDT. And we can come down here and we can put in the quantity that we wish to purchase. So you can literally type it in, maybe something like that if you wanted to. Or you can actually just use this slider bar and you can select a percentage of your available funds that you wish to allocate to the purchase. Once you have your order set up the way that you want it, you just simply come down here and click on Buy BTC. Bybit's going to give you a little pop-up window here confirming your order so we can see that the order is being placed at 18918 It's showing us the amount of the underlying asset that we'll be purchasing at that level, and then it's giving us the order value quoted in Tether. If all of that checks out, you just simply click Buy BTC. Now you can see that we've successfully placed that order onto the order book. The details of that order can be viewed right down here under the current orders tab. We can see our spot pair order here, 
the order type is limit, their direction is buy, of course the order value that we placed at the price point of 18918 and of course the quantity of the underlying asset that we'll be purchasing if price action is able to get down to our entry point. Of course this order is not filled because we're patiently waiting for price to get down to our price point, hit it before that order will execute. At any point if we want to cancel that order we just come over here under action and click on cancel. And now we've successfully removed that order from the order book. Of course, we can use a limit order to sell an asset as well. So we'll just come back up here to the order panel and this time we'll click on sell. Now we want to choose a price point that we wish to sell the asset at. So let's come back over here to the chart and I'll go ahead and grab another horizontal from the drawing tools. And this time I'll go ahead and just put the horizontal on right there. Good enough for this demonstration. Now let's imagine that we're viewing this chart through the lens of a bear. We believe that Bitcoin is ultimately going to go to lower levels. We currently see it playing out a little bit of a range between the horizontal that we added earlier in this tutorial and perhaps this horizontal here at the top side of the range. Currently Bitcoin's on a little bit of a bounce and maybe we're thinking to ourselves, you know what, maybe price action gets up to this horizontal here and tags it and then rolls over and dumps to the downside. So maybe we want to consider being a seller of the asset at that horizontal. Of course, on the y-axis of the chart, we can see a price point correlated to that horizontal coming in at 22,544. So we'll type that in in the order panel under order price. 22,544. Next step is to select the quantity of the asset that we wish to sell. So we can type that in manually here, or we can use this slider bar. For this demonstration, I'll just go ahead and do 100%. Once you have this order set up the way that you want it, you'd click on sell BTC. Bybit will give you your confirmation window again, so review the details here. If it checks out, click on Sell BTC. Now we've successfully placed that order onto the order book to be a seller if price action is to reach this horizontal up here. Of course, we can view that order down here under Current Orders. We can confirm that the order type is a limit, the direction is a sell, the value of the order right here, and the price that the order will execute at. Of course, this order is not filled because we're waiting for price action to get up to our price point to execute the order. If we want to cancel the order, we just come on down here and click on cancel. And now we've removed that order from the order book. The positive side of a limit order is the ability to be more strategic when buying and selling. With a little bit of patience, this gives us the opportunity to maximize the value of our trades. The downside of a limit order is perhaps price doesn't reach your price point and fails to fill your position or exit your position. Or perhaps price action reaches your price point and then continues straight through it. So a couple things to consider when using limit orders. Next up we have market orders. So let's come back up here to the order panel and we will switch to market. Now you'll need to choose if you're going to be a buyer or a seller. A market order will execute immediately at the best available price. This will make you a market taker because you'll be removing liquidity from the order book. Because of this, you will pay a higher fee. Another thing to be aware of is what's known as slippage. We all know that crypto can get moving very quickly to the upside or to the downside. When an asset begins to melt to the upside, the sell orders on the order book will be getting chewed up very quickly. If price action begins to waterfall to the downside, the buy side of the order book will be getting gobbled up. Remember that a market order will execute at the best available price. If price is moving quickly, you may not fill your order at the price you intended. So it's always a good idea to be aware of slippage. Aside from that, placing market orders is nice and simple. Simply choose if you're going to be a buyer or a seller. Then you'll choose the amount that you wish to buy or sell. And then when you're ready, you'd either click on buy or sell BTC. Confirm the order and the order goes through at the best available price. And here's how to set a stop loss using a conditional order. To do that, come back up here to the order panel, click on conditional, then click on sell. And now let's head back on over here to the chart. Let's imagine that we recently bought some Bitcoin at this horizontal level right down here. And we're quite happy with that because ever since, Bitcoin has been slowly increasing in price. But perhaps we're not so confident that if price action was to roll over here and come back down to this horizontal, that this line of support will hold on another test. So perhaps we want to set a condition for Bybit to place an order on the order book to sell our Bitcoin if price action is to retrace back down to our buy level. 
So we can look at the y-axis of the chart and we see that there's a price point corresponding to that horizontal at 18,918. So we'll come up over here to the order panel and we'll type that into trigger price. So 18,918. Now we need to choose a price point that we wish to sell our Bitcoin at if price action was to roll over here and come back down to our horizontal line. So let's head back over here and grab another horizontal out of the drawing tools. Let's go ahead and just stick it on just, just below this wick right here like so. So we're going to be just below this guy. Now we can come over here to the y-axis of the chart and we see that there's a price point correlated to that horizontal at 18474 So let's type that into order price. 18000 474 and we'll get rid of that nine there perfect now we need to choose the amount of the asset we wish to sell if these conditions get met and we'll just go ahead and use this slider bar and I'm just gonna go hundred percent for this demonstration once we have this looking the way that we want it we would come down here and click on sell BTC Bybit's going to give us a little pop-up window here to confirm the details of our order. So we can see our trigger price of 18,918. So if price comes down and touches that level, Bybit's going to place an order onto the order book at 18,474. Of course, we see the quantity of the underlying asset that we'll be selling, and then we can see the order value of that asset right here. If all this looks good, you just simply confirm sell BTC. Now we've placed that conditional order on the order book. So if price action comes down and hits this line and keeps going, we'll be selling our position right here and get out of the way before any more damage gets done to the asset. Of course, use your own creativity with that. Do your own technical analysis. Obviously, I'm not doing super advanced TA here as I'm just trying to demonstrate how this platform works, but that's just one example to hopefully inspire some of your own ideas. I would also like to offer you a quick tip. If you're going to be using conditional limit orders to manage your risk with the stop loss, make sure that you leave enough space between your trigger price, so your condition, and your order price. Typically when Bitcoin breaks these kinds of ranges, it, it does so on high energy, lots of power behind it and volatility. Price gets moving very, very quickly. You want to make sure that Bybit has enough time to place your order onto the order book so it fills. You don't want price action to melt through these levels so fast that your order doesn't hit the order book and then it won't fill. If that happens, you're stuck holding the asset as it waterfalls to the downside and you'd be waiting for it to bounce to get back to that level before it sold it. And you don't want to be stuck in that scenario. So just make sure that you leave enough breathing room between that trigger price and that order price so that you don't get caught in that scenario. Lastly, I'll show you where to find the fees for your spot trading. They're right up here, the top right hand side beside this enable margin button. You'll see a little hamburger menu. If you hover over that, you'll see that spot trading fees pops up. And if you give that a click, It'll bring you over to the trading fees page right here. At the time of recording, you can see that the maker fee rate is the very same as the taker fee rate. Now, I have seen these change during different market conditions. Typically, exchanges like to incentivize those to become market makers, so to use the limit orders. And in some cases, during certain market conditions, you can even get a rebate for doing that. Uh, almost always, though, you'll be paying a fee when you're using the when you're using market orders, so taker fees as a market taker. But check in on these. You might be watching this tutorial in a few months from the day that I recorded it, or maybe even in a year. But now you know where to find this. So come on over here, uh, see what you're going to be paying for fees, and then that can play into your strategy. I mean, if you're going to be trading with larger sums of money, uh, these fees certainly add up. And there you have it, your introduction to Bybit Spot Market. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and hit subscribe. I have plenty more Bybit tutorials on my channel, so feel free to check those out as well. Thanks so much for coming by and checking out this video. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. And until I do, have yourself a powerful day.